it's the winter festival in Rostern, and so you've probably been getting outside with your family and enjoying all kinds of fun activities. And when you're outside in the winter, what I always think is amazing is how many birds I can hear. They're chirping even when it's 40 below. And one of the birds I heard the other day was a chickadee. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a pencil drawing of a chickadee, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so for this project, you're going to need just some simple supplies that you have in the house. This is my journal. I use a bit of a thicker paper. You can use any paper that you have around. Uh, sometimes a thicker paper, your pencil goes on it a little nicer and it'll withstand wear and tear a little better. So if your paper is oriented like this, um, I'm going to start sort of in the middle of the paper, a little to the left side. And we're going to start with the head of the bird. And I'm just going to do a nice half circle, just the easy curve like this, just to start. Okay, and then from there, we're going to go to the front of the bird. And we're going to do a little, come down and make a little indent. That's going to be his neck. So it's not a deep indent, just a little one. And we can sort of smooth that out after. Then... We're going to do another sort of rounded area for the body of the bird. I like to think of this as the shape of like a lemon wedge. So I'm doing the sort of the round part of the wedge and then it kind of comes up like this. And none of these birds are going to be perfect. All of our drawings are going to look different and that's what makes them fun. Now at this point, I'm going to go on the back of the bird and draw this line down like this. So it's not as curved as this one. This is his back. And these two lines won't meet just yet. Now for the tail, right here, we're going to take, you know, the tail can be further down, it can be out, it can be up. It all just depends on how the bird is balancing. But I'm going to do this line of the back down. And then it's just going to come up just a little bit like that, a little bend about that far. Okay, and then we're going to do the bottom side of this tail. So I kind of come up on this line at the bottom of the bird, and we're just going to ease into a matching sort of a parallel line for that tail. Okay, and once you have that, I don't want to chop this tail off just straight. We're just going to do a line that sort of is a bit on an angle like that. That'll join those two parts. Excellent. Now we're going to, you can take a second if you've got that done. We're going to head back up to the top of the bird here and we're going to do the beak. So this is this little indent here, that's the bird's neck. So that's not where we're going to put the beak. We're going to go up from there just a little bit. And we're going to start with a half diamond shape, just like that. This is the back of the beak. Okay, once you have that, do the front of the beak, and it doesn't have to go out too far, but it's like complete the diamond, sort of like the longer end of the diamond, just like that. So you get the beak at the front. And then if you want, you can draw a little line separating the upper part of the beak with the lower part. Now we're going to move on to the black cap that gives the black cap chickadee his name. And um, just above the beak, on this outline of the head here, I'm going to start. You can watch me first. I'm going to do a line that's going to swoop up and over the top of his head. So it'll come like this, and then it'll swoop up and over the back of his head like that. So it's a nice curvy shape, right like that. Once you have that, it gives us an idea of where our eye is going to land. So if the beak is here, I'm going to go back just a little bit. And on the center of this curved line, I'm going to draw a nice round eyeball for the bird. But don't fill it in just yet. Okay. So once you have that eyeball, now we're going to fill it in black. But we're going to leave a little spot at the top white like that so that it makes it look shiny. And that gives our bird a little bit of life. 
Okay, now we're going to add another feature. It's called the bib of the bird. It's a black bib that this bird has, and it's almost a mirror image of the cap. So just below the beak, I'm going to start a line right here and curve it down towards the back of the neck, but don't meet that line. Stop it right about there. Okay, and once you have that, you can move to the front of the chest down a ways, right about here, and you're going to draw a, a little curvy line like that that meets that corner. So it's sort of, sort of like you have a triangle here on their neck for the bib. Now we're, I like sort of getting all the different parts of the birds first before we get into any details. Um, this just helps me out a bit. So we're going to do the wing outline. And we're going to go straight down from the eye. Just imagine a line straight down here to about the center of the body. And that's where we're going to do maybe a bit above that, a bit of a, a C curve like this. This will be the front of the wing. I'll give you a second to get that. And then to get the bottom part of the wing, I'm going to extend this line. And I'm going to kind of go straight from the bottom here, straight. It's almost straight across just up and over the top of the tail. So I crisscross over that back line just a little bit. It gives me kind of a nice wing shape at the bottom. And then to get the top of the wing, I'm going to start right about here. So as if I connected that line, but I'm not going to. And I'm just going to go over and down to meet that other line. I'll give you a chance to do that. Let me stop it. Okay, we got that done. Now we can add in a few more details. And you don't, how I said I wasn't using my eraser, but if you find, okay, maybe I want this wing just a little fatter. You can always adjust it a little bit like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a few feathers kind of at the top of this curve. I'm going to follow this curve like this. I'm going to make about four lines. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just giving a little texture to this. Okay, so once you have a few curved lines at the, the top of that wing, now we're going to do some long lines here that'll indicate the, the longer wing feathers. And you see how my lines are sort of following this bottom curve. You can do about four of those, four or five. And then just to give those feathers a bit of definition, I'm going to go along this edge and I'm just going to make it a little bit bumpy so it looks like those feathers are overlapping each other just slightly. Okay. Awesome. Now we're going to do a couple of long lines on the tail to show that there's tail feathers. Now this part is going to be shaded in later, um, but this will just add a little richness to the texture. One or two lines on there and they do not have to be perfect. There you go. Okay. Now what we're going to do, um, you've got your basic outline of the bird, you know, kind of this size. We're going to go back up to the top and we're going to start shading in some areas. I'll start with the black cap and I'm going to do it with sort of really small parallel lines and I like to follow the curve. If there's a curve on an outline like this, I'll do some little lines like this as I color it in. There's a row. Here's another one. Just following this line and if you want to make it shiny, you can leave a little stripe of white in there as well. We're just lightly shading this in. Okay, now if you want to make that even rounder and have it come to life a little more, you can add some dark, like you can press a little harder. It's always easier to start light and then work back into it a bit. I'm going to darken that. And I'm going to do a little bit darker here and towards the back of the cap, just like that kind of gives it that nice round curve. Next, I'm going to move to the beak. And again, you can just kind of lightly shade it in. Don't press super hard. You can always make it darker later. 
but he's got a little black beak too, just like that. And then the same technique is going to apply to the bib. Now, you see this curve here? My little sketch lines are going to kind of follow that curve. So, okay, so say I do some like this. Go here. Then I do another row because this, it gives you the feeling of some feathers. They're tiny, but you get the feel of that. And sometimes a little bit of white pokes through. Okay, now that I finished with this shading of the bib, I'll give you a, a few minutes to do that. I've gone a little bit darker, kind of just along the front here of the bird, just so that it rounds it out. It gives it a little more roundness to that shape. And like you can add a few um, feathers in towards the back of the neck, but don't fill it in all the way. So I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. While you're working on that, I'm going to slowly think about what I'm going to do with this wing. Okay. So you can kind of see how that feathery texture comes through by using those sort of parallel hatching lines. And you can take more time on that bib if you want, or if you're ready, we can move down to the wing here. What I've done is I started just by retracing that bottom line of the wing because I want to remind myself that this wing is in front of the body. You know, there's a little space between the two and you get a bit of that shadow coming in. So just darken that up. And then you can kind of add some gentle curved lines along these feathers on that it's not a shoulder it's like the top part of the wing you can just kind of put a little bit of that in because this is going to be a darker color that's the coloring that the chickadees have and then there's a part where this part of the wing and this curved part meet right along here and i have to find a way to define that a little bit so I'm just going to do a little bit of shading there so that you can see that this is a, a different set of feathers almost. Just like that. Okay, and we'll darken that in a bit. Let's get a bit of a line there. All right, now we're going to lightly shade. You can follow the lines of your long feathers. Just lightly shade along here again. Don't start uh, coloring in really hard. You still want a feathery texture. Just like this. And then you can retrace some of those feather lines that you had in there. You want to define them a bit more. There, so that gives us a darker wing and you can see kind of two parts of it. Okay, now we're going to move down to the tail. Sometimes it's like I have to warm myself up for a section. So I'm kind of following the bottom of the belly here up and I'm going to darken that uh, bottom end of the tail first. And then using those same little hatching lines, I'm going to darken these tail feathers just a bit. It won't take much because we didn't put a lot there. You can darken a few of those lines if you want but really it just has to look like a dark tail so once you've sort of shaded that in and you know that this bottom part is a bit darker that's pretty good now the technique that we used on the bib here with those little lines we're going to use that down here underneath the wing and kind of above the tail and on the bottom belly of the bird as well so you can sort of um, maybe start here close to the tail and we're going to just do some light parallel lines kind of in rows like we did before. We're going to darken areas after. But we're shading underneath this wing. Actually this was a lot of fun when I was looking closely at chickadees to try and imagine how to draw it and you start noticing all the subtleties in the colorings that they have they're quite beautiful little birds 
they're puffy and fat and round. And they like to eat the seeds that you've left on your yard. Okay, so I've kind of shaded some of this just lightly. Now, again, we're going to think of that rounding out of the body. So all along this bottom edge here, you're going to darken some of those feathers. See how I do it in kind of rows of parallel hatch lines like this. That, that makes it look like that body is round. Take a few minutes. We're going to blend that tail in a little bit. And then I'm going to add the same kind of shading just under the wing here, just so that we know that that wing is above the bottom of the body here. Okay, now another little part of a bit of shading is just kind of on the back. And I noticed that the chickadees, and I know there's birders out there that would have a much more accurate description of this, but their backs are a little bit dark as well. So I'm just doing some of those parallel lines again. But it's not like a, it, the coloring doesn't continue on the whole bird. So I'm, I'm leaving more space in between my lines as I get closer to the top here. And I want them to be darker along that back outline, if you know what I mean, along that edge. And then lighter here. You can kind of see, so this area is a bit lighter and towards the edges it darkens. Excellent. Okay, now the last part of this shading really is I just, this edge here we haven't paid attention to. And you kind of always want to show that you've paid, even along the top here I didn't pay much attention. So we're just going to go along this edge and very lightly add a few of those feather marks with our hatching. Do not overdo this. You don't need much. It's just to show that you've paid attention to all areas of this bird, even here along the back of the head, just a little bit. And then if there's any areas that you think look a little stiff or whatever, that sometimes happens with my pictures, I'm just kind of, you can adjust a few lines. I'm just going to add a little bit more of a tail feather here. There, not much. I think it looks pretty good so far. Okay, and you can always work back in or you can draw a second bird just to get good practice. Now we're going to move into the feet and I'm going to le purposely leave the feet incomplete so that we can make them look like they're hanging onto a branch. So let's see, just kind of on the bottom side of the belly here. We're going to do a little bit of a leg and then it's like just lightly draw sort of a C curve. This will make sense later when we've got the branch underneath. So that's a C curve right there. And you can draw the other leg just above it and another light C curve. And I say light because we'll have to adjust it a bit. Okay, so we've got those little feet in there. Okay, now everybody's branches. We're gonna do the branch and it's gonna come sort of from the middle, like on the edge of the page on the left side there. And it's gonna come down right underneath those C curves of the feet. And then you can kind of shape the branch however you want, but we'll start this just so you kind of hit it. So I'm gonna do a little squiggly line, kind of come down just you can see I'm drawing the line right where their ankles would be, I guess. Do birds have ankles? I don't know. It's kind of like this. Just a line. Your branch can look a little different than mine as long as it comes and kind of hits those ankle marks. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the other side of this branch. And I'm going to get a little thinner on my branch right there. Okay, now before we forget about it, we're going to go back to these feet. And actually, I have to admit, I was thinking, how many toes does a bird 
have or a chickadee. I'm not really sure, but for the purpose of our drawing, we're going to do like two talons coming up over the front. Do you see how I'm curving them around that branch? So it really looks like they're hanging on. And then one, you just draw the top nub right there so that it's going behind the branch, curving around. So that makes it look like he's really hanging on with his one foot, the talons. I'm doing the same to the other foot. Now we're going to pay a little more attention to the branches and the type of tree that this bird is in. You can do whatever version you want. I'm going to do some scotch pine branches because that's the kind of tree we have outside of the station. And I think they're beautiful in winter. And they're kind of fun to draw. So I've got this branch. I'll maybe do a little twig coming off of here. I'm not going to make it too complicated at this point. So I've got sort of a, a Y shape there. And then I might draw another branch that's just kind of hanging down this way. Maybe I'll do I don't know, something like that. And then I think to just fill out this picture, what might look nice is if one has some element on top of the bird here. You could have a branch coming in from the other side or and give your bird some space could come down like this. I'm going to do a little three pronger right here. Just like that. Just so my lines are guided. I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay. So just like I did down here, I'm just going to make these branches, give them a little bit of body. So each branch I'm giving a little bit wider at the base and then just kind of tapering off. I'll do that on these as well. And I'm going to fill those out after with needles, which is going to be pretty fun. Um, but before I do that, I was thinking, I feel like I need a pine cone or two in this picture. So I'm going to do, hmm, where do I put it? Maybe one pine cone here. It's like an upside down egg shape. And of course, this is a, at the closed stage of this pine cone. I might do another one right here because I love the pine cones that the scotch pine have. They look very satisfying in winter. So you can add one or none or three if you want. And um, we'll get back to those in a little bit. I'm going to move back to the needles, uh, the scotch pine needles. And so what I found was easy to get sort of the look of the scotch pine is you pick one of your twigs and you sort of make some nice long needles, like a tuft of needles. It's almost like it looks like a broom um, coming out of the end of that twig. So do a little tuft of needles and then you can kind of work your way back. So you've got some of the ends of the branches done. You might add a few needles here or there on the bigger branch. Sometimes you see that. But I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. And you can always go back into it later if I've gone a little too fast on one section. So I'm going to pay a little bit of attention to the branches now. And just like with the bird, we want to give the branches a rounded look. And so to do that, you're going to trace along the bottom side of your branch just to give it that shadow underneath. So all of the branches would have that same shadow. And then you can just lightly shade each branch in. I did a couple of pine cones here. I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm doing a little extra one here, an upside down egg. And then you do crisscrosses that are curved. So I'm doing some curved lines that get closer together near the bottom. Doing the same on the other side, just like that. That makes it have a round shape. And then to make these look like they're sticking out, you just shade the bottom part of each diamond. 
There we go. And then you can add a dot in a few of those because they've got the little pokey part. And then to shade it, just shade the whole thing lightly and then give a little extra shading down on the bottom side. So it looks and around the edges, so it looks sort of round. There you go. And when you've finished your entire picture, uh, post it um, and tag the Station Arts Centre as well as Rostron Recreation on social media with your drawing uh, to be entered to win a prize.